Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And in this video, I um, I had a bit of a think about trying to get a new science up and running and then round in the details, as is fairly traditional with uh, Factorio. So why am I looking at Module City, you say? Well, let's get into this. So we've now finished all of the Tier 4 space sciences. Okay, there's not a huge amount of energy there, there's no, there's no um, biological there, but they are being made, they are pouring through, they, we have them in... At least, at least some quantity. So the next, so uh, we've been doing a little bit of messing around. You, you've seen in the previous video how we've been working on getting more, more, more of various things, and so more of the vitamin lunch product, more iron, more holmium, more this, that, and the other. Um, but none of those are, were sort of my responsibility because everyone, everyone else, we've sort of, we've we've done a bit of a division of labour in this game, and and so other people have been looking at various different things. So we've got all these science packs, and in Factorio. When you get to the point where you're thinking, okay, I've done a thing, what shall I do next? Well, the next thing, if you don't know what to do next, the next thing is always to make the next science pack. And so that meant matter science. That's the next one in the list, essentially. It's, it's, it's sort of a new tier of science. And I don't know whether this is a... Oh, this appears to be a Crastorio 2 thing rather than a space exploration thing. And that comes in neatly sandwiched between the tiers of space sciences and then the deep space sciences, where it gets really difficult and you have to do things with Naquium. So I thought, yeah, let's make one of these. This should be... How, how, how hard can it be? Let's go in and see what we can do. So making matter science pack one. It takes scrap. Okay, that's weird, but... I can manage with that. I can, I can cope with that. We have plenty of scrap, especially when the material science kicks in. Uh, significant data, fine. Meta matter catalogs, great. Yeah, well, we knew, we know we're going to need catalogs. Particle stream, that's slightly weird and fiddly. We're going to have to do it with fluid handling rather than bringing it in on a belt, but that's not going to be too much of a change in the design. And if Mark can manage to get um, an extra thing in there with the core fragments for biological, I'm sure I can get particle stream in there and coolant. That's fine. Okay, so we need to make matter catalogs. So we let's see. We've got we've got the four different um, data packs to make the uh, matter science. Fine. That's that's exactly the sort of thing we used to. If we look in here, okay. So we need material testing packs. We've got those. Those are being made in the um, in the material science area. They're also being trained over to the uh, energy science. We need a couple of the energy science cards. Okay. That's that's weird, but manageable. So if we build this down here. We're going to have all the stuff we need at this point. We've got the material testing packs here, and we've got all of the all of these data cards coming through from wherever we're doing that particular part of the science. Fine. Okay, I'm okay with this. We'll just have to build it over here on the bottom of what Tristan's been building. I'm sure he won't mind too much. Uh, then this one, particle stream. Yes, we've got that here as well. That's being unloaded somewhere down near the bottom. Yeah, here we go. Here's particle stream, and it's even been put onto the bus. Perfect. Um, matter liberation data. Material testing packs again. Radiation data. Fine. Hot thermodynamics data. Okay, so that's a material uh, data card. That's going to be a little bit harder because we're going to need to bring that over from here. But Mike has built on quite a large scale, and I we we mocked well, I mocked him a little bit for it earlier. Um, but I mean, in, in maybe that's actually a good thing because it means I can come over and can go. Okay, here is this hot thermodynamics data. I can just tap off this belt here, pull a load of it over, put in an additional station somewhere around here, take it away on a train. That's going to be easy. Great. This is looking pretty promising so far. Uh, matter containment data. Okay, this one's a bit harder. So we've got an energy card going in here. That one's fine. We've got the uh, pressure containment. That's a mat that's a, a material card. That's again basically fine. We've got the we've got them over here somewhere on this chain. I can take that away by train. The magnetic canisters. Those are going to be a bit more difficult. So we don't we don't have those over here. In fact, we don't have we don't have canisters at all up here, apart from a few that are being passed around in circles here, um, being used for life support. So we bring in the dirty ones when people have breathed into them. We scrape out all of the gunk they breathe out into them and take it away as contaminated bio sludge and cosmic water. Then we pass them up here again, where we give them a bit of a wash with some water. We put some coal in to give it a new filter, and then we put them out into a, into a chest to be taken away to be breathed into again. Great, that's sort of okay. We, we um, th this works for what it is, but there's no supply of canisters up here they're just being passed round and round in a circle so and we certainly don't have the magnetic ones so let's have a look at how to make those so that requires superconductive cable secure canisters lithium sulfur batteries and rare metals well we seem to have decided that we're going to be building all of this over here in the energy science area and we do have rare metals being brought up already so that's fine but the rest of it, um, so, well, let's have a look. Superconductive cable, that's made of holmium cable, which we've got here, and cryonite. We've got both of those. Okay, that's that's nice and easy. We can make them on site as well. Um, but we are still going to need the lithium sulfur batteries and the secure canisters. Well, there's a little bit of a spoiler on the screen here. You can see that we've got them over here now. I've added in some extra belts, uh, and those are now being brought up from Norvis. So on the Norvian side, the batteries were quite easy because we already had the batteries being brought over for the um, uh, for the for the state for the, for the train system over here, where we're taking up all of the things to go up to the uh, Norbit space bus. 
Has someone rebuilt that, or is that how it's always been? I can't remember. Yes, no, I think that's how it's always been. Uh, so yes, we have the lithium sulfur batteries on here somewhere. Yes, there they are, being taken up. So that means they're on the bus down here somewhere. Um, way down here, yeah, but that's fine. That, so I extended the belt over here, brought them up, fed them into the ener energy supply, energy science supply train. Uh, that's not, not, not you. I fed them into the energy supply science supply drone, wherever it is. It might be this one. It doesn't matter. But I fed, fed them in there, and that, that was that was fine. That was quite straightforward. Uh, the canisters were a little bit more difficult. And so on the bus, we have this machine down here that is capitally taking in all the resources required and making the secure canisters. But I looked at that and thought, I'm not going to trust the entire science production to this one machine. This, I mean, it, it is doing fine for making the uh, life support cans, or at least it was until we turned this this um, inserter around because we had more than enough cans made already. But I don't think that's going to be sufficient. And so I squeezed in a, this, 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 this little module over here, uh, halfway along the bus, uh, which is now, as you can see, churning them out at quite a rate. So we've got, we've got the new high-tech uh, advanced assembly machines, that's tier 4 assembly machines, I think, and we're bringing in all of the resources you need, pour, pouring and pouring out all of these cans. And and load of scrap as well, but that's that the scrap is fine We just dump that onto there's a disposal belt down 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 here, which we can just add to uh, This it's there's not all that much on it So adding this little bit more is absolutely fine It can deal with that without any problems and then the canisters coming down here And we just feed them onto feed them onto an, an endless uh, mark belt that goes all the way down across here all the way down here and uh, To I don't know it's in, it, it's in here somewhere here it is, this one. So we've got all these canisters coming along here, then being passed up here, and once again going into the um, the energy science train. Great. So all of that is now being brought up to space and being put onto the bus over here, and that's great. This this system is working exactly as we expect it to. Uh, I, put, I put them on the, on the shopping list uh, up here to get the extra the, those extra resources flowing through. They're being brought up. It's working. This is this is exactly how it's supposed to go. Um, and so we went. Okay, right, great. I've got all of that stuff. I then put a list of all the uh, the cards. Uh, I put a list of all the bits and pieces I was going to need into this um, combinator down here. So we've got the qu quark data, phenomenon data, phenomenon, phenomenon data, radiation data, hot thermodynamics data, London Eye data, and pressure containment data, and then the the other things as well at the bottom. Put them all into here for a note. And then Tristan was very kind, and he pulled he pulled them out of the um, the various different uh, machines that are making them up here. Dropped them onto belts. So I've got I've now got all of the things I need on these belts down here, or, or at least I've got all four of the energy ones I need. I still need to bring over the, the material ones. Myself. Myself, and also make the uh, magnetic canisters out of the uh, out of these canisters and the batteries and and so on. So the, yeah, there's, there's there's still quite a lot of work to do, sure. But I've now got all the resources over here that I need, except for the material datas. Uh, I just need to start assembling things. So I then went right, okay, great. This is looking really promising. I'll have this done by the end of the stream, easy. How what what, what, what how, how 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 do we do this? Okay, you need to use a material fabricator in order to make any of these science pa cards. So all four of these data cards re require material fabricators in order to make them. Okay, well that's that's fine. We'll just go off. We'll we'll, we'll we've got the um we've got the column of doom up here that where we're making all of the different things in the world. We'll make some material fabricators. How hard can it be? So about material fabricator. Okay, so that requires basically that requires three different advanced buildings, all of which are being made on here, but none of them are being put onto belts. And so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I think I might be going to break my no bots rule. I'm going to just bring bring those machines over by bot. That's fine, and the speed and the speed module threes as well. And then I went speed module threes. In fact, no, I didn't even do that. I didn't even notice that these weren't speed module. These weren't module threes. Um, I was going, oh yeah, they're, they're bound to be. They're, they're, I was just, just, I looked, glanced at it, saw the three blips of light, and went, okay, they're module threes. That's fine. We'll get the bots to bring those over as well. It's a little bit dirty. We're going to be using bots for everything. Everyone will mock me. And then someone pointed out, actually, hang on a minute. Those are speed modules and efficiency module sixes. And we went, oh. That's going to be interesting because we don't have module sixes anyway. I mean, okay, we've we've made a few by hand in order to put them in the um, in the science machines over here, and I think we might have even made the, yeah we've made a few module sevens or even are those are those sevens? No, we haven't even made module sixes over here. We've got up to module fives in the um, in the science labs and the module nine that I recovered from a pyramid. We haven't even made we haven't even handcrafted module sixes at this point. So I'm going okay. This is going to be uh, this is going to be a bit of an this is going to be interesting, isn't it? So okay, let's let's see what what do we actually need for these things. So obviously. You need module five. You need material catalogs. You need heavy bearings. Okay, that's um, that's reasonably. That's not too bad. I mean, we, we've got we've got all these catalogs. They're all ju they're all just being passed around by the trains. That's fine. We can go we can go off and get those heavy bearings. Yeah, all right. We've got them. They're being they can be brought up easily enough from from down on Norvis. That's not going to be a problem. Module four, material catalog one, and heavy girders. Fine. And the module threes we're making down on Norvis. Okay, great. So 
this is a little bit, it's, it's going to be a challenge, but it's not going to be too difficult, is it? I mean, again, how hard can it be? So I thought, right, okay, over here, I'll build up this, start building up this area. We're going to need, we're going to need to bring in a train of stuff up from Norvis. This is going to be, well, I haven't set up any of these filters yet, but this is going to be tier three modules. It's going to be all of the, the, um, the Iridium intermediates. It's going to be all of the, um, Holmium intermediates for the efficiency modules. And at some point I'm going to need to bring over all of the biological intermediates in order to make the, uh, productivity modules as well. But we'll, um, we'll save that until we've actually got, until, uh, until Mark's got the whole system sort of sorted and working and I can work out what he's done, done with it. Uh, but, you know, that shouldn't be too bad. So, okay, we'll, we'll do that. So I then then went down to Norvis and I thought right okay so we're going to need we're going to need another train for this we're going to need a big we're going to need another train here it is over here and we'll feed in all of these things so this is this is going really well at this point we've got we've got I, I set up the, the train system so I wanted the uh, the tier three module the tier three uh, efficiency modules speed modules productivity modules the holmium intermediates the iridium intermediates and okay it, it also turns out I needed green circuits for the um, for, for, in order to make the uh, machine learning data to make the tier four modules so that was again all these things. Eminently doable. I put in put in various belts and things. Got the got all these intermediates and the green circuits in because that's really really easy. Then I went. Okay, I'm also going to need tier three modules. Do we actually have them anywhere? Um, no. I mean, then they're not being dropped off here. These are just the tier one modules that we needed for a much earlier science pack. Um, what about um, up here in in, in 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 all the bus drop off stations? No, we're not actually bringing in tier three modules here. And then I sort of started thinking. So how are we bringing in tier three modules? Because we have them. They are they're being supplied somehow. Because when we build stuff out like any of these things, we're bringing in tier three modules, and they're getting they're getting brought over by the by the bots and dropped into these machines. So there is a supply. Of them somewhere and when we when we uh, build stuff up in space we're bringing in tier 3 modules and it's all being built and it's all it's all working fine oh hang on if that, that does that mean so that means if we're not bringing them into any of these stations over here that means presumably they're all being brought in by um, by 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 logistics bot being dropped off here put into the trains here <sighs> that's a bit ugly given the number of them we're getting through but okay i suppose that's working that is is working but I, I don't really want to do that if I'm going to be bringing them up in in the enormous quantities that are going to be needed to make the later tier modules. Because I'm making an uh, I'm making module city two up in space. I want to be able to make the, the the fours, the fives, the sixes, maybe even the sevens and the possibly the eights and the nines. Maybe not going quite that far. Certainly not at this stage. I don't think we can afford that. But certainly making making up to tier sixes in reasonably large quantities. And making one tier six requires two tier fives, which requires four tier fours, eight tier th and therefore eight tier threes. And so if we're making these in significant quantities, we're going to be bringing up a lot of modules, and I don't want to do that by bot. So I uh, sort of I did a little bit of look, searching around the around the world, and I think it's it's quite likely that somebody helped me with this. I, could, I, I found found it for me, and I discovered that up here we had these train systems that were dropping off the modules. And previously these trains were coming over, and they were just feeding them out into um, into into a single chest with yellow belts because that was all that was needed. We we're getting through the modules quite slow. In fact, it was it was this system that we're using here for the tier one um, efficiency modules. They were just being brought over and dropped. Uh, uh, we had this system for for all the tier three modules in order to make them available. That wasn't good enough for my plans, so I've upgraded all of this. We've now got, I've now upgraded it to blue belts pulling out of the trains and dumping into these warehouses. And I've made these red warehouses because that means that when we do any building on Norvis, all of the modules, tier three modules, are still going to be available. So I've not removed any functionality from the system. I've merely improved it, except that there aren't any modules in here. But then from these. I built these, these these are possibly the most ridiculously lot over the top belts I've ever built. And we're putting modules on them, which are fairly expensive. So this is probably generally foolish, but given the number of modules we're going to be getting through as our plans start to, as we start to advance further and further into the game, I'm, I don't feel too bad about this. So I put in the, these these belts coming all the way across here, down down here. Oh, we, oh look, we've got we've actually got some some um, productivity modules here. Uh, that's excellent. We've actually got something. But these come all the way down through to down 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 and down and down and onwards and onwards forever and ever and ever and ever. And then eventually down here. Oh look, here's here's some of the efficiency modules. And these will eventually then they then all come over here and we'll go up here into the in, into the um, train system along here. And now maybe I should put in a a reading system along all the way along along these belts and feed the numbers up and say. Um, and see how much, and, and when the, when there's lots and lots of them available down here, then tell it to stop bringing, in, letting them in from up here. It would be a bit bursty, but all but overall that would would make things a little bit more sane. However, when the system really churns into action, we're going to be getting through them at a rate that means I think I think that maybe just doing this is probably going to be the way to do it. 
Uh, and so, yes, we have many, many modules being brought over an incredibly long distance. And yeah, it feels, it, feel, it does feel a little bit silly, especially when I look at it again now. But I just got into the sort of, yeah, I'll slap down a belt that goes from here to there. It'll be fine, you know. It just, I just thought I'd build out, build out on this scale. It'll, it'll all be absolutely fine. But now I'm thinking this is a little bit crazy. Maybe I should have put these, maybe I should have put these in down here and had slightly short. It would have been a slightly shorter belt run, and it wouldn't have been enormously shorter. It's a, feel, feeling it on the screen. Yeah, okay. It would it would have been quite a bit shorter. Maybe that. Maybe I should redesign this and, and bring in the modules down here. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments what you think because it is. We are going to have a lot of modules buffered on these belts. But then once we filled it up, it just means we've got a lot of modules buffered. Is is, is that a problem? I I don't know. The thing is, though, it turns out, as, as you can see from the fact that these, these trains are all sitting here, these warehouses are all empty, and we don't have any speed modules, there are problems further upfield as well. So if we can come up here and look at look at Module City, this is the area that Mike set up ages ago that was building us all of our Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3 modules. And it's built to quite a big scale because it's a Mike build. And so over here, you can see we are churning out, uh, in theory, we are churning out Tier 1 uh, productivity modules. As it happens, we're actually, we've actually run out of glass. Hang on a minute. We've got a station. We've got a, we've got an enormous quantity of glass in a station that I was looking at in yesterday's video. Hmm, that's a bit weird. We're going to have to have a look into that in the next in the next stream. I can tell because that should not be the that should not be a problem. We should have an enormous quantity of glass available here. But anyway, yes, we are make we in theory is we're making all the t we're making a huge flow flow of tier one modules here. Then we're making a reasonable quantity of tier two modules up here, and, and we still are because we've got uh, we don't know we don't have any more on the on the buffer. These are just using up the very very few remaining ones left. But we've got a few tier two modules coming up, and that means we have a few tier three modules coming up, and that's using up vulcanite. But we have a lot of vulcanite. Now that's that's all fine. Over on the other side, we are doing efficiency and speed. So here here, here is speed. Same sort of thing. Uh, this one is actually running. That's that's good. We like we like to see that. We've got all of these coming through here. Look at this. This is all very very old style designs as well. So we've got we've got tier two assembly machines and no modules at all whatsoever. Now in a way that doesn't matter because you can't use productivity modules on making any sort of modules. So we're churn, we're churning. Th so we're not going to say we're not spending any more ingredients than we otherwise would be. But we are spending. We we do have more machines than we need uh, which potentially means a bit of an impact on the UPS but it's not it's, it's, I think I think I'm probably okay with that but anyway yes this is making all the tier one modules that are then being made into tier two modules up here and then not being made into tier three modules up here well then we're okay no we are actually no we are making a few tier three modules but we have a bit of a shortage of Immersite and I was gonna say a shortage of machines but actually most of them are running maybe it's just that this is just too slow for, for the demands we start to put onto the system but then these all flood down here. What do we? How, how are the tier, how are the, um, the the efficiency modules? The efficiency modules are also being being made at at a, at a rate as well. So this does seem to, so this seem like we're making basically all of the modules except the tier one uh, productivity ones where there's the glass shortage, and then they're being dribbled down here into the into these machine into these stations where we can then bring them through. At the moment we've got. 32 stacks in there. That'll need to get to 40 before we can call a train. So you can see the rate they're coming through. Not really sufficient. Maybe maybe we just need to fill all of those machines up with speed modules and see what happens, and then try and fix all of the uh, all of the input rates uh, because it, we're gonna we're then gonna struggle with with input speed on absolutely everything. I don't know. We'll see how it goes though. Um, but yeah, we're trying to make up enough of these. Then once we've got up to forty stacks in each one of these warehouses, a train can come out, grab a load more, and bring it down to the to the uh, new module area. And so you can see why me going. Oh yeah, I'll do matter science today. It'll be easy. Has been. Uh, fairly extreme hubris and I've now discovered that actually the problems with the supply are going back well I mean partly to be honest actually if I come over here if I grabbed all of these tier 3 modules and gone off and made a very very small setup that would just make me uh, 20 30 40 tier 6 uh, speed and efficiency modules there's probably actually enough for all of that here but I decided that it'd be a good idea to start trying to make them en masse because then we can start upgrading more of our facilities in the future up to tier 6 modules and isn't that going to be a great idea what could possibly go wrong um, <laughs> and I've been chasing productivity supply problems all the way up the chain, essentially, is what we're saying here. <laughs> so, yeah, we're uh, it, 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 I've bitten off a lot more than I could chew in a single stream, but at least it's given me a, it's given me a big project to get my teeth into, and that's what I like in Factorio. So I don't want to sound negative about it. I've had a lot of fun doing it um, and, and just finding where all of these problems have been and, and putting in more and more ridiculous solutions for absolutely everything, and I still haven't got to the root of it. Um, but, yeah, it's been fun. This is what Factorio is all about.
The other thing we done, we've done done here, um, and I say we, uh, because Tristan did Tristan did the first step of it, which is where you come along and you go, oh no, this is a five five warehouse station, we don't do that anymore because it's bad for UPS. Um, and then he's got, basically, you get, you get the first step is that you go in and you, you remove the limit on this warehouse and you link, and you link the, where, and you link this warehouse into these warehouses. And so the train now won't come out until this warehouse is nearly full. And ideally you do it by linking it through the pylons as well, which Tristan has done. So he's done this exactly right. Because then later on, you or somebody else can come along with the old deconstruction planner and say I don't want to have these warehouses uh, no, I don't want to have these warehouses. You can get rid of all of them. You can get rid of all of these inserters across the bottom. You can get rid of um, all of these belts in the middle that are passing the uh, the stuff. In this case, the blue circuits through, and then replace it with what isn't actually in my pace buffer apparently. But basically, just the, uh, the 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 green belts like this to unload it nice and quickly. And so this this converts it from being one one station uh, one station with five warehouses in it um, to one to a station with a single warehouse. And because we now have the loaders, which we didn't we didn't have we we couldn't un when we built all of these in the first place, you couldn't unload a train with loaders which is why we've used inserters like this now you can because the, because the upgrades to factorio that happened during the playthrough and so we've used green green loaders and belts here it unloads the train probably just as quickly as these the all these inserters did if not as quickly then close enough um, and it reduces the um it reduces the load on the on the game because you've lost a load of your warehouses so things are generally run a bit better and a bit faster and it's all all a bit nicer um, and so, yeah, I've gone through, and with, with Tristan's help, Tristan doing the first stage, I went through and did the second stage on all the ones that were ready. Um, we're now upgraded to the, yeah, there you go, you see it's unloading really, really quickly over here. Uh, we've managed to upgrade the stations to the uh, to the new advanced version. As part of going through and doing all of these uh, improvements over here, I've been making sure that a lot of the resources, so previously a lot of the resources, like the Immersite Crystals, and uh, actually not the, uh, not the Vulcanite, that one had been upgraded, I think, and also the Cryonite, had been being brought in by Delivery Cannon. So I've added in an extra station here for the Cryonite, I've made sure that the train is bringing in the um, now. Now we're bringing in the um, the, the uh, crystals by by train, or at least we will be when that actually gets sorted out and starts working, because there are some problems there which we should look at in a minute. And these are all now coming in by train, which means we have, in theory, we have now much much better supplies of them. Although Imasite, as I say, a bit dodgy, but Cryonite up here is working perfectly. The train's coming down with loads of Cryonite in them. It's being passed through here and then taken away to be made into the. It looks like it's the efficiency module threes that use that. And oh yes, and also I had to turn around a belt and up turn around and upgrade a belt over here. I don't know why the bots haven't done this yet, actually, because I did that towards the end of the last stream, sure, but I don't know why the bots haven't done this yet. Um, because, uh, yes, this is the delivery cannon that was bringing it in before. We kind of want it to stop now, uh, but that, that was passing it up through a ridiculously long belt up there and in very, very small quantities. And also it's being brought over here to be turned, to be to, uh, to use to make the uh, the water ice that we're then taking away, apparently by train and also by delivery cannon to anywhere that needs it. So I wanted to make sure I didn't break this system because I think the ice is probably going to be used in various places. I couldn't tell you where off the top of my head, but I suspect it's quite useful. Um, and so, yes, I needed to make sure this system didn't break, uh, which is why all these belts are being done. Let's have a quick look. Is this inside a... Ah, this is not in a uh, in a roboport area. That's why it's not been done. So we need to put in a roboport somewhere in the middle of here, probably just along there, like this. I could put one of these in, maybe... I don't know. I could put one here, I suppose. That'll probably do. It doesn't have power, but... Yeah, Baby steps. We'll, we'll fix that in the next stream. So yes, we, we, need, we need to fix that all up so the Cryonite can now be brought in by train. And that was a little bit of an effort because we didn't have Cryonite by train yet at this point. So I went over here. I put in put in another station down here. And this is the same as all of the other stations we've got along here where um, a train comes down from space full of Cryonite, unloads it here into this warehouse. We then have a, tra a ground train comes over, picks up the Cryonite as required, and then we'll take it off to the station where it's needed. And so there are a couple of stations where th where this is required. That's also helped with my production of the um, the, uh, the beryllium intermediates over here, because we've got a Cryonite station which that was previously being filled up by delivery cannon, and still kind of is, to be honest. Um, but now in the future it won't be. We won't get any more delivery cannon drop-offs into here, in theory. Uh, and now the train will come around and top it up whenever whenever it runs low. Um, this is all ground to a halt because of the shortage of Immersite crystal. Uh, Immersite plates, sorry. Um, and Immersite, yes, Immersite is a problem. We have, yes, here we have an Immersite system that has been set up. Uh, and in theory, a, a train comes down from, from uh, Norbit with Immersite crystals and Immersite plates in it. Those both get unloaded into this station where they will then get split off. The Immersite crystals go into this train, the plates go into this train, so those can be taken off to where they're needed. This system is it's kind of horrible, to be honest, um, because we're trying to bring two things through on the same train. And if we have a look up in Norbit, then we'll see the, the horribleness will, will sort of extend further up. And actually, it's been, it's been cleaned out a bit now. Uh, 
Uh, I think this was I think this was Tristan's work. Uh, yes, it was. He's gone in and tidied this up because it was it, it just straight up didn't work. Uh, we, we had a system here where, I, where yeah, so we've got we've got a spaceship that brings we've got a spaceship that brings over the, the plates and crystals, and then they were all just getting dumped into warehouses here, unloaded into this one, and then passed up into this one, and then from here they were being sorted out into and split off, uh, and, 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 and then we're loading up about. Well, roughly 50-50. It's not quite. It's 60-40 uh, crystals and uh, and plates over here from this warehouse. But, of course, what happened along here is that the crystals filled up this warehouse and and this warehouse and, and I think all of these warehouses. It was just crystals all the way back and it was just jamming up the whole system and turning, the whole, it, turning it all into an absolute nightmare. It just it just straight up didn't didn't work. We had to do something about that. And so Tristan's come in here and tidied things up a bit. And this now is actually working, as you can see, uh, having skipped forward a little bit. We have a supply of the Emosite crystals in here. There's still no plates being brought in, so the fixes have only got back to about this point. The spaceship and the, uh, the other planet at the other end still need some further work doing to them. But we'll have a look at that next week, I think, because I don't believe that's been fixed yet. But down here, what, what, the way it's been fixed is that we now have each of the things that we want, so the plates and the crystals, for each of these warehouses, they're being passed out and then passed on into the next one when the next one has a distinct shortage of them. So if we have a look at some of these, for example, you can see here, it's saying if less than 100. So if there's less than 100 crystals in this warehouse, which there isn't, but if there was, then this belt will pass some through. And then up here, if there's less than 100 in this warehouse, then it'll pass them through. And up here, hopefully the number is a bit bigger. Uh, yes, if there's less than 2,000 in this warehouse, then it'll be loaded up. So the idea is a train will swoop in here, it'll take as many crystals as it needs, and ideally some plates as well, but that's a bit less likely. It'll fill up with those, and then it'll clear off to go and, and take them to wherever they're needed. While the train is off elsewhere, the crystals will flow through up here from this warehouse, uh, and then be, and this one will then be replenished from this warehouse, which will be replenished from this warehouse, which will be replenished from this one. So they'll flow sort of gradually up the system like that and, and be put into the warehouse. And the idea of this is that it means we don't end up trying to put too many crystals into any of these. We just gradually empty. The, we will empty this one down to a hundred, then we'll empty this one down to a hundred, then we'll empty this one down to a hundred, and then the last dribbles will flow through, <clears throat> which is. It's a, it feels like a slightly odd way of doing things, but I think it, it makes sense in order to keep the uh, the ship unloading as smoothly as possible. So that's going to work quite nicely. And, they, and as you can see, these are all filtered like that. These will all be blacklist filtered, yes, like that. And this is this is to allow us to unload all of the um, the, the the junk that will be coming in on this spaceship. And currently, there isn't actually any junk being shipped in on these, which is a little bit weird because uh, Mike set it up rather strangely, and, and a lot of the um, a lot of the byproducts are being used up as part of the uh, the processing for making the imosite crystal. So it's it's a little bit weird, but I'm expecting at some point in the future there'll be at least a bit of stuff coming through from core fragment processing and also quite a lot of sulfur because making uh, imosite crystals produces a lot of sulfur uh, we've not seen any of that yet though so um, but hopefully we will at some point but anyway, yes, these are then blacklisted, so they will pass out the junk and anything else. It isn't either of the sort of imosite uh, products, because those are filtered on there. They'll put them into here, and then those will flow out up the belts here, go into the into the warehouse here to be taken away exactly as normal. So you've seen this sort of system before, but we've just got a slight, a slight weirdness added to it because of the, um, the extra... Because the, we're bringing in two different things on the spaceship, I am a bit worried that this is going to cause problems up the up upstream from here. But uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. I suppose what we can do is we can we can we can just send a signal out from here, um, saying what is yeah. So we're sending from spe Taras spaceport to Taras. At the moment, we're saying hey, we need a lot more plates, and we're probably kind of okay for crystals. So over here, we are we are subtracting. We're saying oh, if less than five thousand, then send a signal out for that one. If less than ten thousand, send out a signal for that one. So these are are probably at the moment. Um, yeah, so here we go. The, the, we're saying at the moment we have enough crystal, thank you, because we have 39,000 of it, but we could do with a bit more plate. So we're sending a plate signal out to, to Taras spaceport, uh, or to Taras, in fact, where it's presumably then only shipping up the uh, the plates from the ground up to put them into the spaceship. There's going to be a lot of lag on these signals. Having them having it set up like this is a little bit weird, and we may end up with just an entire spaceship full of plate coming out next, uh, and, I'm not, and I'm not sure that's going to be quite what we want. But I think, uh, overall, maybe it'll keep things reasonably sensible reasonably tidy I I guess we'll see I, I hope we have enough storage for when an entire spaceship full of e full of one and then an entire spaceship full of the other turns up I suspect we're not going to but maybe we'll get through it. <sighs> yeah. these numbers these numbers these numbers concern me let's let's just leave it at that and we'll see how it goes in the uh, when once we get it up and running and so all of this comes together in this 
tiny little stub of an area that I haven't finished yet. All of the ingredients that I've spent all this time talking about are going to be coming into here to allow me to make all of those many, many, many modules that go uh, in many machines going up here. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to lay this out yet. What I think I'm probably going to do is have different areas for each of the different types of modules. So we'll put in uh, the speed modules at the bottom, then the productivity modules, then the efficiency modules, or whatever order. Um, all the things that are coming up from Norvis, then, okay, we'll have some fairly long belts to feed those through. That's fine, I don't mind that. But it means the expensive things, like all the catalogues, can then be brought in further up uh, by the actual thing that they're going to be producing and we're going to have a lot fewer of those cached on the bus on, on the on the bus which I think is going to make things a lot better this coolant system down here is literally only there for making the um, machine learning data for the tier 4 cards but I was going to need it for that in fact technically I only actually need the the, uh, co the cool thermofluid but I just dropped in the standard blueprint and then I think I disconnected a pipe somewhere um, yeah, I, m I must have done. Oh, no, I turned this pump around, uh, which is why we don't have any, have any of the cold or the super chilled around here. Uh, we've only got the we've got warm and we've got cool, uh, but that's all that's all we're going to need. Um, and then once all of that comes together and we actually have those tier six modules, then I'll finally be able to make those um, machine the the uh, matter fabricators that I was talking about. And then finally over here, I'll be able to actually start making the matter science. <sighs> it's been a big it's been it's been a mission, but we're getting we're getting there. The next thing I want to look at is all the sort of tinkering that Tristan has been doing around the edges. So whilst I've been off going on, on a sort of a massive project, uh, Mark has been uh, doing the, the biological science for that's, that's another big project. Mike has been off trying to get an iron supply running. Tristan's been going around doing lots of little fixes here and there. So um, he said he'd fix the um, the signalling over here to say so that we'd only we'd only get a, a minus one coming from here when we needed more. This signal receiver should always have a zero or a minus one coming up to it, and it appears to have fifteen hundred at the moment. So I don't think that. That's been fixed quite as, 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 as um, I thought he was claiming to have done. Yes, the other end of it is down here. This is, uh, this is there's a minus one on there, and we're looking at the total in here. Um, oh, I see. So he's got it set in. Yeah, all right. He has fixed it in a way that I wasn't expecting him to have. Um, I was thinking he was going to put it through a, a combinator and just send us a zero or a minus one. But he's he's reckoning on if we can completely on this triggering this when this when this chest here is completely empty, which. I don't know. It might it might stop the production of uh, gold science for for a little while if that happens. But there is a lot of gold science on the on the bus and being buffered on on this belt that goes all the way round and down to the uh, to the trains. So to be honest, it'll probably be absolutely fine. I think. Uh, we'll I'll leave it as it is, and then we'll worry about it in the future if it turns out to not be okay. He has also sped up the barrel crushing that's going on up here by simple um, pr application of a speed beacon and a um, and speed modules in, in the uh, in the crushing machine. So this will now run significantly faster. As the barrels come through, they'll be chomped up into into into, into, into steel, put into here. So that's good. Keep that going nice and quickly. He's increased the speed that we're making all the various. Um, data cards for the Energy Science 4 catalogues as well. So now this is running actually this is running at about 50% speed. There's still a shortage of the, the, the ones that are made up here in particular and also the ones that are made here as well. So maybe we need even more machines um, or maybe you just need to come along and put a load of speed modules into them and maybe beacons. That, that, that'll speed it up nicely and then it'll probably work fine. And on the subject of speeding up these cards, he's also increased the speed that some of the ones that are going to be stolen later for matter science, like uh, like this one, I think. Uh, he sped up the rate that those are being made at, just to make sure that when I start slurping them off from the bottom here, uh, we don't run, we don't suddenly run out of them all. So that's that's good. It means I can just steal them all without worrying about uh, whether I've broken the energy science production. We've had an upgrade of some of the solar panels up in Norbit because we we're running a bit low on power. So he's turned some of the blue ones into red ones. Maybe it's these ones up in the corner here. Uh, who, who who knows? All the rest of them seem to be seem to already just be blues oh maybe the ones down here as well so there's been some upgrading done on these on these panels just because we, we need to make sure that we always have enough power and currently we have 32 gigawatts available apparently we we were using significantly more of it at, at, at some point in the past <laughs> He has also put together uh, this train, which is supposed to be bringing over the various resources for making making the energy sciences. So all, these are all the intermediates that need to be fed in in appropriate quantities in order to keep all these machines over here running. So the idea is you bring in the holmium ingots, they get chopped up into holmium plates in order to feed the first stage, which actually doesn't seem to be hooked up properly. This should be going over to... Oh, what's going on here? don't know what he's... This, there's some very strange things going on here. Um, oh, he'll have been getting rid of all of the plates that were already on the belts here, so this now needs to be... Um, well, we can put that one that way and that one that way. There we go. So now we can start making the plates again. So that'll start... Uh, oh dear, that's, uh, that's, that's wrong. <laughs> we need to get rid of that as well. And also 
all of them. There we go. Uh, so, so, sort of fixed. So we need, yes, we need to get the ingots in here to make the plates for the first tier of science. Then we have the uh, the cables coming in. Um, also, the, the cables are supposed to be being brought up by this train, unloaded along here. And then the um, I, I presume this one is the uh, the solenoids, and then this one is the is the processors. We only seem to have ingots and processors over here at the moment, and the train has not cleared off again. Right, because he's missing he's missing the combinator over here that has minus one of all the things it's supposed to have. So if we look at this this one here, which is the energy catalog strain, the train comes in here and it unloads until it runs out of one of those things because we've got this cat with this combinator here that says looks that adds minus one of everything onto it. So if you run out of anything, then this one over here will flick over to say, Oh look, I've got a I've got a yeah, negative number of something and then pass that through into the train, so the train will leave. That's not been done up here, so this train hasn't departed. Um, however, there is some extra complica complicated steps in this as well. So the train will first go to quantum processor pickup, load up on those um, until it's until it's full, which I don't think that's going to work. Uh, it'll then go down to Norvis and pick up, and then go to the energy extras pickup, and then load up on all of all of these until it's full, or until it's got the right number, a decent number of all of those, and there's been some inactivity, which I guess is just to keep it going if there's a bit of a supply shortage. Then it comes back up again. Then it goes to energy extras drop, and then it try, then it where it unloads, and then it try, and then it waits for a uh, waits for a ping from here. I don't know why these are exactly the same. I'm not. I think this this needs this needs some fixing. But in theory, the idea is that the train will go off, get the get the uh, get the cert, get the processors which are being made somewhere down here in the energy science area. I think. Then it'll go down to Norvis, get the other intermediates, then come back up, then come over to here, drop off a load of stuff, then possibly go to anywhere else that needs the processors, and then and then go back and and then go around the loop again. It's a little bit complicated, and I don't think it's quite working yet. But I'm sure Tristan will finish it off in the next stream. And so that brings us on to everyone's uh, favourite part of the uh, of the video updates, where we go in and have a look at what we researched in the last uh, in the last stream. We researched Astro Science Four. That was because I'd finally I'd started making the catalogues, and therefore it's worth actually researching the science pack because then we can start doing the the, uh, the the we can start making them and then start doing further on researches. We don't we don't research the science packs until we're ready to start making them because it keeps the uh, the things that you can the list of things you can research a bit simpler. And this is going to get us another spaceship structural integrity bonus. We can do lattice pressure vessels. Uh, we can investigate naquium processing and nanomaterial. Well, we can't actually; these are still red. But you know, we get we get a few extra things from this. Interestingly, we don't seem to get all that much just from getting Astro Four. A lot of other things seem to rely on other stuff being developed as well. Um, there is not Astro Four doesn't really get you all that much immediately. The next thing was the lattice pressure vessel, which allows us to make lattice pressure vessels, which is, um, yes, a thing. Uh, apparently, the, the, it looks like these are all ingredients for future stuff, so it'll allow us to make better thruster suits, arco-link storage, wow, uh, life support, better life support equipment, uh, better heat exchangers, better engines, all these various things, but a lot of these are also gated behind deep space science, or in this case, behind matter science. So, again, not going to get a huge amount out of that one, uh, but we do get a thermal radiator 2, apparently, which is, uh, which is going to be nice, and that was, in fact, the next thing we researched. So Thermal Radiator 2 gets us the next level up of Thermal Radiator. Uh, we are going to need heavy assemblies and lattice pressure vessels to be being made in order to get, get any of these, but when we do make them it'll allow us to, to uh, chill um, the, the thermofluid down from warm to cool a bit more quickly and I don't think it's it, I don't think it's more efficient, I think it's just a faster machine, so we shall have to see how, whether it's worth putting much effort into those. We got another level of mining productivity, so this means each time a drill runs, we'll get slightly more stuff out of the ground uh, without using any more of the stuff from the ground. So each time it digs, it'll use up one piece of uh, one piece of ore from the ground, but we'll get one and a bit, and a slightly larger bit than we did before out of it. We have Energy Science Pack Four as well, because uh, similarly Tristan managed to get got all the uh, all the cards together, started making the Energy Science Four catalogs. Therefore, it's time to do the time to do the Science Pack, so we can start getting stuff from there. And that's got us a few exciting things like uh, matter fusion, dynamic emitters, energy. Wow, yeah, it, it looks like there's there's a few there's a few more th interesting things tucked behind here. We're going to get things like shields and better mining drills, and oh yeah, lo lots of, lots of stuff. Energy weapon damage, and yeah, quite a lot of, quite a lot of good fun stuff in there. And to complete the air set, we've also got biological four as well, and that's going to get us that gets us the plague rocket potentially, so we can go and blow up all of the biters in one go. Um, I've never actually used the plague rocket. Uh, it's extremely extremely effective and powerful and destructive. Um, it's also extremely expensive to make, but it wipes all of the biters off a single planet in one go. Um, it does leave the planet uninhabitable. You need a uh, survival suit to go onto it, but you know. 
could be worth having for some of those planets that we want to just quickly and easily get rid of all the biters from. We've made dynamic emitters, which do absolutely nothing all by themselves, but again, they unlock lots of... They're, they're a component, they're an unlock for lots of other things that we're going to want to make at some point in the future. Like, again, better, we better weapons, uh, shield projectors, that sort of thing. We have unlocked the portable fusion reactor, which is another way of providing power to everything in your suit. It's a step up from the nuclear reactor. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it is, but it is. Uh, <laughs> 4x4 four by four by four produces 2.4 megawatts, uh, this one is also 4x4, four four, produces 3.2 megawatts, so it produces a bit more fuel, probably uses a more exciting fuel type as well, so it's going to be a, a bit more effort to get to get it working I expect, but it'll produce loads of power when we do. And we've developed the Personal Battery Mark III to go with it, which is basically a bigger version of the, battery, the Personal Battery Mark II, it means it allows you to carry more power around with you in your, um, in, in, in your, in your, in your suit armour, uh, and therefore keep your lasers going for a little bit longer. During the stream we then finished off um, Intelligence 4, which is a, a bio, which is an, a, a, an upgrade you get from Bio 4, and that gives you an, a productivity boost for your uh, lab research. So, I mean, this is a, a, a this one is, is an obvious thing to go for because it's going to make every, it's going to make all of your science immediately cheaper. So it's a very very high priority, which is why that is the only one of these we've done. The rest of them we, we have we've unlocked number four of all of the others. So agility, you, we, you move, you can, we can move faster, we can get more health, we can craft faster, uh, we can carry more stuff. Those are all great, but this one is this standout best one by by a huge margin because it makes your research a little bit more efficient. And that's the end of the research list. Come back on Thursday to see us getting on with that and um, and me. Hopefully, I will get that finished. I mean, I'll, I, I, being realistic, I hope to get the um, the modules finished there, and maybe get some of the some of the machinery set up over here. I think getting actual matter science by then, by the end of next stream, is going to be a bit of a. Uh, a bit of an optimistic um, goal, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. But we'll definitely get some stuff up and running, and there'll be some big improvements there, and lots of questions and me scratching my head. On Tuesday, I should be playing some more XCOM 2, carrying on with the campaign there, and going through zapping more aliens. Uh, last week, we had a bit of a problem with some aliens who kind of got the better of us. They managed to kill the VIP we were escorting and injure lots and lots of my soldiers. So things aren't going quite as well as they have been for some of the uh, previous streams. But, you know, that's XCOM for you. I just need to try a bit harder in the next one. Uh, there'll be the catch-up videos coming out over next weekend as well, like the one you're watching at the moment, and another miscellaneous video in the middle of the week to keep you entertained. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there's always going to be something new on there to watch. Um, follow, do whatever, do all the other, all the other little things that a YouTuber will always ask you to do. And thank you very much for watching. I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>